Question 11. Are there any concentration risks associated with the holdings in the underlying index? Yes, there can be concentration risks associated with the holdings in the underlying index that SOXS tracks inversely, the IC Semiconductor Sector Index. Here's a breakdown of why. Concentration Risk in Indexes Concentration risk refers to the risk that an investment portfolio is overly exposed to a limited number of assets or a specific sector. Sector ETFs, by their nature, inherently hold a concentrated basket of stocks within a particular industry. The IC Semiconductor Sector Index is no exception. Concentration Risks in SOXS Indirect Exposure while SOXS doesn't directly hold the underlying stocks, its inverse performance is tied to the concentration risk within the index. Impact on SOX's performance If a few large semiconductor companies within the index experience significant losses due to company-specific issues or a subsector slowdown, it can disproportionately impact the performance of the entire index and consequently, SOXS. O oh, example Imagine the top three holdings of the index represent 50% of its total weight. If these three companies experience a sudden decline, the index value and, inversely, the value of SOXS would likely experience a larger decline than if the same percentage decline was spread more evenly across all the index constituents. Mitigating Concentration Risks Limited Control Investors in SOXS have limited control over the specific holdings within the underlying index. The index composition is determined by the index provider, ICE. Broader market exposure. Consider incorporating broader market exposure alongside SOXS in your portfolio to diversify away from the concentration risk within the semiconductor sector. Understanding index weightings. Researching the weightings of the holdings within the IC Semiconductor Sector Index can help you understand the level of concentration risk associated with SOXS. Additional Considerations SOXS and Short-Term Plays SOXS is designed for short-term bets on the direction of the semiconductor sector. Concentration risk might be less impactful for short-term holdings compared to long-term investments. Alternative inverse strategies, some inverse ETFs focus on broader markets or sectors, offering potentially lower concentration risk, but also potentially lower leverage. Question 12. How do shorting semiconductor industry futures contracts compare to using SOX ETF? Both shorting semiconductor industry futures contracts and using the Direx and Daily Semiconductor Bear 3X Shares ETF, SOXS, offer ways to potentially profit from a decline in the semiconductor sector, but they come with different risks and considerations. Here's a breakdown to help you compare. Shorting Semiconductor Futures Direct Exposure By directly shorting futures contracts tied to the performance of a semiconductor index, you gain direct exposure to the price movements of the underlying assets. Profit Potential if the price of the futures contract falls, you can potentially make a profit. The profit amount is directly proportional to the size of your position and the extent of the price decline. Margin Requirement Shorting futures contracts requires a margin deposit, which acts as collateral to cover potential losses. This upfront capital requirement can be significant. Unlimited Loss Potential Theoretically, there's no limit to how high the price of a futures contract can go. If the semiconductor sector unexpectedly rallies, you could experience significant losses that could exceed your initial margin deposit. Active management, managing short futures positions requires close monitoring and active management. You might need to roll over expiring contracts and adjust your position size based on market movements. Tax implications. Profits from shorting futures contracts are typically taxed as ordinary income, which can be less favorable than the capital gains tax rate for long-term stock holdings. SOX's ETF. Leveraged inverse exposure. 
SOXS offers leveraged inverse exposure to the IC semiconductor sector index. It aims to deliver a dash 3x daily return of the inverse performance of the index. Amplified returns. If the semiconductor sector declines, SOXS can deliver amplified returns compared to directly shorting the index. The 3x leverage magnifies both profits and losses. No margin requirement. There's no upfront margin requirement to invest in SOXS. You simply buy and sell shares like any other ETF. Limited loss potential. The maximum loss you can experience with SOXS is limited to the total value of your investment. However, due to factors like fees and volatility decay, the actual returns might not perfectly reflect dash 3x the inverse return of the index over extended periods. Passive Investment SOXS is a passively managed ETF. You don't need to actively manage your position or worry about contract rollovers. Tax Implications Profits from selling SOXS shares are typically taxed as capital gains, potentially offering more favorable tax treatment compared to shorting futures contracts. Choosing between the two Risk Tolerance Shorting futures carries the risk of unlimited losses, while SOXS limits your downside but also introduces other complexities. Consider your risk tolerance carefully. Investment timeframe, SOXS might be less suitable for long-term holds due to volatility decay. Shorting futures might offer more flexibility for active management over shorter timeframes. Experience level, Shorting futures requires a good understanding of futures markets and margin requirements. SOXS is a simpler investment for beginners. Tax implications. Consider the potential tax implications of each approach based on your individual tax situation. Alternatives. Inverse ETFs with longer focus. Some inverse ETFs target weekly or monthly inverse returns and might be better suited for long-term investors seeking to avoid volatility decay associated with SOXS. Put options on semiconductor ETFs. Purchasing put options on a broad semiconductor ETF can offer some downside protection if the sector falls but comes with upfront costs and option expiration risks. Question 13. Considering the risks of SOX ETF, are there other asset classes that can provide a hedge against a decline in the semiconductor industry? Yes, there are alternative asset classes that can provide a hedge against a decline in the semiconductor industry, each with varying risk profiles and potential benefits. Here are some options to consider. 1. Inverse Semiconductor ETFs Concept Several inverse ETFs specifically target the semiconductor industry. These ETFs aim to deliver positive returns when the semiconductor sector experiences a decline. Mechanism Unlike SOX's leveraged approach, some inverse ETFs achieve this by employing various strategies like daily or weekly inverse resets, holding inverse futures contracts, or utilizing put options on the underlying index. Reduced leverage Compared to SOX's 3x leverage, these inverse ETFs might offer lower leverage ratios, 1x or 2x inverse, potentially reducing volatility decay and making them more suitable for long-term investors. Examples, ProShares Semiconductor Sector Short ETF, SSDX, Advisor Shares Dorsey Wright Semiconductor ETN, DSDW. 2. Broader Market Inverse ETFs Concept these ETFs aim to deliver positive returns when the broader stock market experiences a decline. Hedge potential. A significant decline in the semiconductor industry is likely to be accompanied by a broader market downturn. These ETFs can offer a hedge against such a scenario. Diversification. These ETFs provide exposure to a wider range of sectors compared to SOXS, offering some diversification benefit. Examples, ProShares Short SP500, SH, Direxin Daily, SP500 Bear 3X Shares, SPXS. 3. Short-Term Treasury Bonds Concept, 
Treasury bonds, especially short-term maturities, tend to have an inverse relationship with stocks. When stocks decline, investors often seek the perceived safety of bonds, driving their prices up. Hedge potential Short-term treasuries can offer some protection against a decline in the semiconductor industry, particularly if it's caused by broader economic factors. Lower returns Treasuries typically offer lower potential returns compared to stocks or inverse ETFs. Reduced volatility Treasuries offer lower volatility compared to stocks, making them a potentially good portfolio stabilizer. 4. Cash Concept, cash, while not an investment in the traditional sense, can act as a hedge during market downturns. Hedge potential Holding cash allows you to avoid potential losses in the semiconductor industry or broader market decline. Missed opportunities Cash offers no potential for growth and might be eroded by inflation over time. Liquidity Cash provides maximum liquidity, allowing you to take advantage of buying opportunities that might arise during a market downturn. Question 14 What is the risk-reward profile of alternative strategies compared to using SOX ETF? Here's a breakdown of the risk-reward profile of alternative strategies compared to using the Direxin Daily Semiconductor Bear 3X Shares ETF, SOXS. SOX's ETF High risk, high reward potential, SOXS offers leveraged inverse exposure, aiming 4-3x the daily return of the inverse performance of the IC Semiconductor Sector Index. This translates to Oh high potential gains, if the semiconductor sector declines, SOXS can deliver amplified returns compared to a non-leveraged inverse ETF. Oh high potential losses, however, if the semiconductor sector unexpectedly rallies, SOXS can experience significant losses magnified by the 3x leverage. Other risks Oh volatility decay over extended periods, SOXS might underperform its targeted 3x inverse return due to compounding effects of daily rebalancing. O oh, fees and expenses, the expense ratio of SOXS eats into returns, especially if held during periods of stagnation or minimal price movements. O oh, counterparty risk, SOXS relies on swap agreements, which introduce the risk of a counterparty defaulting on its obligations. Alternative Strategies 1. Inverse Semiconductor ETFs, Lower Leverage Moderate Risk, Moderate Reward Potential These ETFs offer inverse exposure to the semiconductor industry, but with lower leverage ratios, 1x or 2x inverse, compared to SOXS. This means O lower potential gains Gains from a decline in the semiconductor sector will be less amplified than with SOXS. O lower potential losses, losses due to unexpected rallies in the sector will also be less severe. Reduced volatility decay, lower leverage helps mitigate volatility decay, making these ETFs potentially more suitable for long-term investors. Lower fees, some inverse ETFs might have lower expense ratios compared to SOXS. 2. Broader market inverse ETFs. Moderate risk, moderate reward potential. These ETFs aim for positive returns during a broad market decline. This translates to O oh, indirect hedge, they might not perfectly hedge against a semiconductor downturn but can offer protection if the decline is part of a broader market correction. O diversification benefit, exposure to a wider range of sectors, can reduce overall portfolio risk compared to SOXS. Potentially lower fees, broader market inverse ETFs might have lower expense ratios than SOXS. 3. Short-term treasury bonds. Low risk, low reward potential. Treasuries, especially short-term maturities, tend to have an inverse relationship with stocks. This means O oh, limited gains, the potential for returns from treasuries is typically lower than stocks or inverse ETFs. O oh, protection against downturn, treasuries can offer some hedge against a semiconductor decline, 
particularly if caused by broader economic factors. O Liquidity and Capital Preservation Treasuries offer high liquidity and are generally considered a safe haven, potentially preserving capital during market downturns. 4. Cash Very low risk, no return potential. Cash offers maximum liquidity, but no potential for growth. O preserves capital, holding cash avoids potential losses in the semiconductor industry or broader market decline. O missed opportunities, cash offers no chance of capital appreciation and might lose purchasing power to inflation over time. Choosing the right strategy. Risk tolerance, align your investment strategy with your risk tolerance. SOXS offers high potential rewards, but also high risks. Consider your comfort level with potential losses. Investment time frame for short-term hedges, SOXS or cash might be appropriate. For long-term strategies, consider inverse ETFs with lower leverage or a combination of asset classes. Market outlook, analyze the underlying reasons for anticipating a decline in the semiconductor industry. Choose a hedge that aligns with your expectations for the broader market environment. Remember, diversification is key. Combining these strategies can create a more comprehensive hedge against a decline in the semiconductor industry while managing risk. So, to recap, SOXS offers leveraged inverse exposure to the semiconductor industry, meaning it aims for big gains when chip stocks fall, but also comes with amplified potential losses. We explored some of the risks involved, like volatility decay and counterparty risk. But hey, there are other ways to hedge your bets. We looked at inverse ETFs with lower leverage, broader market inverse funds for a more diversified approach, and even the safety of short-term treasuries or just holding cash. The best strategy for you depends on your risk tolerance, investment goals, and what you think might happen in the semiconductor market. So, do your research, consider your options, and leave a comment below telling us what you think about SOXS and how you might use it, or not use it, in your portfolio. Thanks for joining the conversation. We'll see you on the next one.